No. 
the splendor of the king yeah. clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice
Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus. hung on a cross to pray. Father, thank you for the anointing that's in the house. Thanks you for the power and the presence. Thank you, Lord, that you take us imperfect vessels of clay and your perfect Holy Spirit flows through us. Lord, there's lots of needs in the house this morning. And I'm thinking when Peter began to preach at Cornelius's house, how the Holy Spirit began to fall on each one of them and they were filled and their needs were met during the ministry of the word. And I ask you this morning to meet me needs in this house by the ministry of the word, even as we receive it. Everybody say, I receive the word, I receive the word. in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Amen. I want to talk to you about sowing in the land of famine. We're in a really rough time in this nation. And I believe that the enemy would use it to discourage you. The enemy would say, what's the use of trying to do good? The best thing to do is just hold up somewhere and stop. We need to be more diligent now in sowing than at any time. There's a story in the book of Genesis, the 26th chapter, and it regards Isaac, the son of Abraham. It said, and there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, to Gerar, and the Lord appeared to him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. It's a mess. There's a famine but don't go to Egypt. I'm going to bless you right where I placed you. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. I will perform the oath which I swear to Abraham thy father. I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven will give unto thy seed these countries and thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. I want you to notice something. If you mark in your Bible, underline that fourth verse. Not in thy seeds, plural, but singular, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. There's one coming through the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the house of David that's going to bless us all. That's a prophecy about your Messiah. He's in a desperate situation. He's in a terrible situation. His flocks and herds are famished, starving. They're thirsty and everything seems wrong. He checks in with King Abimelech and he's planning on going to Egypt. And God said, don't go to Egypt. I can bless you right here. 
That's my first point. Don't go down to Egypt. Egypt is the type here of doing things by the ways of the world, by the natural means. And he's saying, I want to bless you to show you how good I am. Now, you know, it's easy to be blessed in a land of plenty and wealth, right? It's easy to be blessed when everything's going your way and you're not being persecuted and nobody's coming against you. Nobody thinks you're crazy because you believe in biblical principles. That's easy. But he's saying, I want to bless you in a place of famine. Now go down to verse 12. Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. That don't make sense. And the Lord blessed him, and the man waxed great, and he went forward. And he didn't go backward, he went forward. He grew until he became very great. He had possessions of flocks and herds and great stores of servants, and the Philistines envied him. <laughs> Are you willing to be blessed even with those around you envying you? I've heard some horrible things said about me in the last few weeks, and you know what? I want to praise the Lord because Jesus said, beware if everybody's speaking well of you. Amen. How I many you know when you get blessed, people get jealous? They, they don't like it. But listen, the, listen to Deuteronomy 11, 10 and 11. The land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt. This is Moses speaking. God speaking through Moses. From whence you come, where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. But the land that you cross over to possess is like West Virginia. Huh? Is a land of hills and valleys which drinks water from the rain of heaven. You see, Egypt had a flat land, totally flat. Anybody drive through Texas out here one time or another? In Egypt, the land was so flat that they dug irrigation ditches and then they could move the water through paddles and pedals through those ditches to their garden. So if it didn't rain just so there was water in the river, they were okay. He said, I'm taking you to a different place. Where I'm taking you, there's mountain peaks and low valleys. How many appreciate the beauty of mountains and valleys? Hallelujah. I drove through Texas, and you know what? Not clear through Texas, but I drove in Texas, and it seemed to me like I had driven four hours, and I hadn't gotten anywhere. The, the landscape never changed. If you're from Texas watching this, God bless you. Thank God for you, and we're glad for Texas, but God bless Texas. <laughs> but, but anybody know that sometimes in the valley... He restores your soul. And sometimes the climb is treacherous and it's tough and it's hard to get to the top. But Lord, when I get to the top of that mountain and I look out over the view and I see creation, I can see mountain peaks on ahead. And that's letting God letting you know you have a future. He said, I'm not taking you to a place where you can do it on your own. I'm taking you to the place where you're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. You're going to have to walk through valleys. And if you're going to get your garden watered, you're going to have to pray for the rain of heaven because you're not going to be able to truck it up these hills. Amen. So there's a purpose for it. I don't know about you. But I've found out that sometimes it's worth the climb. And it's time to seek the Lord. He's going to reign on our garden. And he said, don't go back to Egypt. Don't try to do it the way you did before you were saved. Don't try to do it the old way. I've got a plan for you that if you'll sow in the land of famine, I'll bless you while everybody else wonders why. You know nobody's impressed with your Christianity when everything's going your way? But boy, when you're in the battle, when you're in the valley, when you're having a tough time and they see you still having the joy of the Lord and still having the power of God in your life and still holding on to your faith and still being faithful, then it makes a difference. Amen. Tell the person next to you, you, you're tough enough, you can take it. America has become a land of famine. Wicked things are happening like I've never imagined in my lifetime. The Bible said in Psalm 9, 17, The wicked shall be turned into hell and the nations that forget God. We are reaping what we have sown. 
There is a famine in the land. Am Amos 8.11 says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. I've never seen such a time when there's so much false teaching, so much false preaching. Not only is there a problem with that, but there's a lot of problem with listening. Even when the word is declared, sometimes people, well, that's okay, that's what he thinks. Folks, let me tell you something. I do my best to back every statement I make with Scripture. I'm giving you His Word, not mine. And there is a famine, not just for the preaching of the Word, but for the hearing of the Word. Jesus said repeatedly, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. In the book of Revelation, over and over, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. We are so full of social media. We are so full of television and all the things that are going on and TikTok and Instagram and, and Facebook. And I'm not telling you any of these things are a sin, but I'm telling you our priorities are so warped that we don't even recognize it when we hear the Word of God. And if you get your news just from these social platforms, God have mercy on you because they'll pull out a lot of truth to put their garbage out. I don't know about you, but I just want the old-fashioned Word of God that is an incorruptible seed. What I'm doing right now is I'm sowing some seed and there's going to be a harvest and I don't want you to be discouraged and think, well, I tried to live right for years. Nothing good ever came of it. You just hang on. We must do like Isaac and sow in the land of famine. I talked to somebody one time and they said, well, we're, we're, we're getting up some vegetables. We ordered uh, some uh, five-year barrels of food from a TV preacher and we're going to hole up somewhere and wait to see what happens. I'm going to keep planting. I'm not going to give up. I want to see a harvest. I believe the Bible teaches a harvest is coming before the end. And if you want to reap a harvest, you need to sow some seed. You need to scatter. You say, yeah, but sometimes it's stony ground. Sometimes it's fallow ground. Keep sowing seed. Ecclesiastes 11.4, He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He regardeth the clouds will not reap. <laughs> you know, you can always find an excuse. Oh, it's too windy today. <laughs> too cloudy today. It might rain on me. Well, I would do the right thing. I would go out. But, I, you know, the last few times I talked to somebody about the Lord, they just got mad at me. So I, I'm not going to fool with it now. But I'm telling you, folks, there is a harvest coming. God has a last day's harvest. Listen to what James says in James 5 verse 7, therefore be patient brethren until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth waiting patiently for it until he receives the early and the latter rain. I believe there's a latter rain coming. Be you also patient Establish your hearts. Why? The coming of the Lord is at hand. Don't get distracted. You ready for this next verse? Don't grumble against one another lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. It's just about over. We need to be planning. We need to be reaping. And we need to be aware that we're not to be fighting with each other because the judge is standing at the door and the trumpet's about to sound. Amen. Let us, Galatians 6, 9, and 10, not grow weary while doing good. Now, I'll be honest, this hit me right between the eyes. A lot of times when I'm preaching to you, that double-edged sword slices into me too. Because sometimes I feel like, what's the use? I'm weary. I've tried. I've taught. I've preached. I've sang. I've done this. And, and, and I'm doing what God wants me to do. And yet, I'm still not seeing the results I want to see. You know what? The results aren't up to me. My job is to sow the seed and pull the weeds. Amen? We know those thorns and weeds will choke out your harvest. 
as we have. Listen, don't grow weary in well-doing. In Everybody say due season. In due season we will reap if we faint not. God made Noah a promise. He said, as long as the earth remains hot and cold, summer and winter, seed time and harvest. Say that with me. Seed time and harvest will not cease. Are you worried about global warming? There's global warming coming, but not what they're thinking. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you. I, I, I'm, I'm on that plane load out of here when the trumpet sounds. I'm not staying around for the fire and brimstone. Don't be weary in well-doing. In due season we shall reap if we faint not. Notice how he concludes this. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let's do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. I want to tell you something, folks. Sometimes you get weary in well-doing, and sometimes you want to just give up. Have you ever planted anything and it didn't come out right? Man, where I live now, we've been there about 16 years, I think. Some of you helped me get that house put in there. I cannot count how many times I planted grass seed in that front yard and backyard and on that hill. I'd plant grass seed and rocks would come up through it. I'd pick off the rocks and it'd blow away and I'd plant it again. And, and you know what? I got discouraged. I thought, well, maybe I should just let the woods grow up all around the house and forget this. But I'm telling you, my wife wouldn't go along with that. And, but can I tell you we've got grass now? That sometimes there's a few seasons that you plant and you don't reap. There's times that you sow your seed and the enemy brings blight and destroys the harvest. And there are times when you think you've done your best and everything falls apart. Listen, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't give up. Keep planting good seeds. Do you know every good deed you do for somebody is planting a seed in their life? God will lay it on your heart to help somebody financially. Do you know you're sowing into the kingdom? Did you know when somebody does you wrong, if you'll do good for evil, that you're sowing into the kingdom? I don't know about you, but I don't want to sow the wrong kind of seed because did you ever notice when it rains, the weeds grow faster than the plants? Let me give you a warning here. Don't sow to the flesh. Galatians 6, 7 through 8, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that sows to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. Anybody go ahead and give in to those lusts and those addictions and those bad things and see the corruption? Has anybody done that? Come on, we all have in the past. And if we're not careful, we still will. He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap reap life everlasting. Listen to what Proverbs says. He who sows iniquity will reap vanity, sorrow, and the rod of his anger shall fail. The New Living Translation says, his harvest will be disaster and his reign of terror will end. Listen to me. Proverbs 6, both verses 14 and 19, warn about sowing discord among brethren Amen. and sisters, just gossiping and causing trouble and, and, and confusion. Listen, I don't know about you, you're going to reap what you sow. So let's sow to the Spirit. Let's sow some mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Those who sow mercy will reap mercy. Now, unless you think you can be absolutely perfect the rest of your life and never make another mistake, then you need to forgive others. Amen. Are you hearing me? How about some compassion? Back in the 80s, some of you older folks like me will remember this. There was a TV preacher that got caught up in a lot of sin and garbage. And another TV preacher said, he's a cancer on the body of Christ. And a year later, he got caught. I wonder what would happen had he been merciful. I'm not going to call any names because I believe they both found mercy and grace and repentance. God's a good God, isn't he? 
But what if he'd have been merciful and he'd have said, that's my brother. He's overtaken in sin and a fault. Let's go try to restore him spiritually. Let's encourage him to take a sabbatical. Let's minister to him. Let's bring some grace. But instead he called him a cancer on the body of Christ. You better be careful. You better sow some mercy. Tell the person next to you, be merciful to me. If you're married, that'll help you. Compassion. Did you all know that King Saul did a lot of wicked things and David kept showing him mercy? You know, if you know the story of David, there came a day when David desperately needed mercy. Good thing he forgave time and time again. Think about that. Lord, help us. How about respect? I had a preacher tell me one time, you've got to demand respect of your people. You make sure they call you by your title. Now, I don't believe we should be disrespectful. But you know how to get respect? Show respect. Did you know you need to be respectful to your children? That don't mean you let them run over you and do whatever they want. But how many know there's a way to be respectful to people? There's a way to show appreciation to people. There's a way to tell people, somebody said, how dare you let that person call you by your first name? I said, let me tell you something. They've known me since I was a kid, and they show me more respect than you ever will just call me pastor. I don't care if you call me pastor. I don't care for reverend, though. He alone is reverend. <laughs> Amen. But I'm saying you need to treat people with respect, and in turn, you will get respect. What are you sowing? How about honor? What if we'd honor one another? What if we'd prefer one another? Wives, try instead of all the time belittling your husband in front of any, everybody, try showing him honor and watch how much differently he'll treat you. And vice versa, husbands. Amen. How about friendship? I wish I had a true friend. Let me ask you something. What kind of a friend are you? He that hath friends, Proverbs 18, 24, must first show himself friendly. I can't meet anybody that's trustworthy. I had somebody come up to me in Walmart just a few weeks ago, and they were talking about behind somebody's back, about somebody that talks behind people's backs. I just said, talk to you later. Huh? Can we be real? Now, some of us are hurting and discouraged because we've tried to do what's right, and in trying to do what's right, sometimes we fail and sometimes we let weeds in, right? How many know financially sowing and reaping? Has anybody here ever been able to outgive God? Has anybody here tried to be faithful in giving and seen God meet your needs and abundantly restore and replenish? I'm telling you, folks, Paul said it this way. Now, I don't talk about finances much, but it is in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. Read that. He who, talking about giving, he who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Did you know a farmer would starve to death if he got a sack of corn to plant it and instead of planting it, he cooks it and eats it? It wouldn't be very good, but... And Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying sometimes when you have something in your hand and it don't meet your need, it might be your seed. And you might say, what missionary could use this? What poor person in the church could use it? Where in the community does there need to be help? And why don't you sow and watch what God will do for you? Amen. I've been doing this for years, and I'm telling you, folks, every time I've ever given generously, God's found a way to bless me back. How about rebuking the devourer? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Listen to this beautiful passage in Hosea 10, verses 12 through 13. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy... Here's what I want this church to begin to do. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. Lord, break up the hardness of my heart. Lord, soften my heart again. Rain righteousness on me. You know why you need to do this? Because here's what we've done in the past. You ready? You have plowed wickedness and reaped iniquity. 
you've eaten the fruit of lies because thou didst trust in thy way and the multitude of thy mighty men. We got this. I can do this my way. It don't matter what God says. You keep it up and see what you're going to reap. Amen. There's parents and grandparents in this house and you've sowed into the hearts and lives of your children and grandchildren and you're not seeing a harvest yet and the enemy's trying to discourage you. And I tell you that sometimes there's a long time between seed time and harvest. My mom and dad have both been in heaven for years and years now. And I'm still seeing some of their prayers answered. <laughs> Not only that, they've already reaped eternal life and a multitude of blessings there. Don't get weary in doing what is right. But pastor, I've tried to teach him right. I've tried to do right. And, and let me tell you something else. Don't let the enemy condemn you because you weren't perfect. If you were to take your Bible and start at Genesis and follow human history you will find that there's not been one fully functional family since Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel messed it up. Amen. Are you hearing me? So if somebody pretends like they've got it all together and they're just perfect, get out of their sight. One time I was, I don't know, I was sitting up here on the platform and we had a guest speaker and I never sat up here. And, and he had a bow and arrow with him. This was years and years ago. And he was saying, my children are arrows in the bowl that I've placed them in in the Word of God. He went on to brag about how all of his children had never backslid, never left church, and were doing such wonderful things. And they were the most perfect kids either. And I looked across the faces of those of you in the congregation, and I saw such despair. And I said, thank you, God, that my kids acted like devils sometimes because they played with the deacon's kids. <laughs> That was just a little humor, but I'm gonna tell you something. My kids have not been perfect. I've not. I wasn't a per. I was a preacher's kid too. There's people in here old enough to remember what a rascal I was. <laughs> Behave, Debbie. <laughs> See, I said you had to be really old to remember that. So. <laughs> now listen, though. You continue to do what's right. I tell you, there were times when I'd be doing something wrong and I'd hear my mama's prayers. Are you listening? Was mom and dad perfect? Absolutely not. Have you been perfect parents? Absolutely not. But I'm telling you, keep sowing good seed in the lives of your kids and your grandkids. Not always condemnation. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, if you'd only done things differently, things would have been better. Say, devil, you're a liar. I know I had some weeds and thorns, but I'm pulling those thorns and weeds in Jesus' name, and I'm believing for a harvest. I want you to be encouraged this morning. I've seen the Lord turn several of my kids around. It's not finished yet, but you know what? I've sowed the seed, and I'm believing God for beautiful harvests. Sometimes you sow through trials and tribulation and in pain, and you're hurting things that are said to you, things that you do and say bring a lot of pain, but I'm telling you, don't quit sowing. Listen to this. They, Psalm 126, 5 and 6, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless, everybody say doubtless, doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So let's not be weary. Let's pull some weeds. Let's sow some seeds and let's believe God for harvest. I expect to see all my kids and grandkids in heaven. I do. Amen. Do they act like saints? No. But you know what? I've got a promise. I had a preacher say, oh, well, if, if they've departed, you didn't do something right. When they're old, they'll not depart. I said, it's old. When they mature. How I many know when you were immature, you did a lot of crazy things? Come on. Anybody beside me? I want to be real. But my mom and dad sowed the incorruptible seed of the word in my life. 
That's why I'm standing here trying to sow the word into your lives. Because I want you to know if your ground is broken up and the Holy Spirit is raining on your ground, the seeds that we're sowing will take root. And I'm telling you, I've lived long enough to see a few harvests. The Goodmans used to sing an old song, I don't regret a mile, I've traveled for the Lord. And Howard said, I've sowed enough seeds by the wayside for the birds to feed upon. But I've also held enough golden sheaves in my hand to make me keep sowing on. That's my word for you today. No matter how much the enemy has jumped into your garden and sown tares and messed with you, I want you to get back in your garden, spiritually speaking. I want you to let the gospel plow that, hallelujah, overturn that, soften that soil. I ask you to keep sowing the seed and let the rain of the Holy Spirit and the warmth of the sunshine of God's presence bring a harvest to you. Because just before he comes, great angels just thrust in the sickle. There's a harvest. Amen. Can I give you one more scripture on this? I'm telling you, if I used all the scriptures on sowing and reaping in the Bible, we'd be here for weeks. But Jesus said, don't save four more months. And then comes a harvest. But lift up your eyes to the fields. They're already white. You want God to save your kids? How about you minister to other people's kids? Amen. Amen. There have been times when my kids would be in trouble and I've helped other people's kids. Don't judge anybody else's kids because they're not acting like saints. Don't say, well, at least my kids don't act like their kids. Amen. All of us have rotten, stinking flesh and our kids were born of that. But I'm going to keep sowing and believe in God for harvest, not just for my personal family, but for my spiritual family. I don't know about you, but if you'll start witnessing to others and reaching out to others, you can have spiritual sons and daughters that will honor you if you will honor God and honor them. Would you all stand with us, Father? Thank you for this word. Burn this word into our hearts. Help us to pull some weeds of unforgiveness, some weeds of bitterness, some weeds of where we've made mistakes and help us to see the fruit of the Spirit and the results of sowing to the Spirit. Active in our homes, our lives, our families, and our finances, and in every way, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You want to pull some weeds, the altars are open. Amen. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought Deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh, Yahweh, you're the God who fights for me, Lord. Fire by night is the guiding light to my feet. Cause you found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh Yahweh, you're the
you got I'll sing of all you've done Death is swallowed up forever By the fury of your love You stepped into my Egypt You took me by the head You marched me out in freedom Into the promised land And now I will not forget you God Death is 